Vargas's friend, Tanya Chavez, joins me now from McAllen, Texas. Tanya, thank you so much. How you doing? My heart's broken because an undocumented immigrant like myself is facing deportation at this moment. Can you tell me first, can we talk about Jose first and then we'll talk about your case. So tell me, what happened to Jose Vargas? Were you there and was it clear why officers were handcuffing him? No, we didn't know. Uh, we got a phone call about 8.30 that Jose had been arrested. And so at that point in time, we started mobilizing our community to be able to come and show support and appreciation for him because the reason why he came to McAllen, Texas, to the Rio Grande Valley, was to show support for the undocumented immigrants that are coming in from Central America fleeing for their lives. And so I think it's just fair that we return the favor to him. He didn't know that he was coming to a zone that is highly militarized. There is border patrol everywhere in our community. And so he did not know that there were border patrol agents but Tanya, uh, airport security, unlike many other places in the nation. Tanya, he's a very accomplished man. He's very researched. He's part of a, he's a, you know, a filmmaker. He, it's, it's hard for many to believe that he did not know the risks of going to McAllen, Texas and going to the border. And many are wondering if this was done on purpose. What do you say to that? No, this was not done on purpose. I can attest that he truly came here to show his heart and appreciation for this community. He grew up in San Diego. He grew up in a border area that is not highly militarized like ours. And so why would he come to make this a political stunt? Like, I think if he came was because his heart, he followed his heart to be able to show support. He came to this country as an unaccompanied minor. Like, these kids are coming. And today he faces deportation because we have a broken immigration system. Yeah. So uh, let's talk more about that and about your particular case, because you made a very heartfelt plea after his detainment for his release and for Congress to act. And you talked about being caged. Um, you said that you were caged. I think you said in the Rio Grande Valley. What, what, did, you, what did you mean by that? You were trapped. What, is, what does that mean? The Rio Grande Valley were surrounded by either the international bridges at the south or by the checkpoints at the north. Mm -hmm. We also have the Gulf of Mexico and more checkpoints to the west. And so we can't get out of this zone. We are trapped here. I lived here for 14 years of my life. And like many undocumented immigrants in the area, we can get beyond the checkpoint. And unlike... So what you're saying is, is you could leave... On the other side. You could leave, but then you can't come back. Is that what you're saying? Or you could leave, but then you would be detained. We can't attempt to leave the Rio Grande Valley. We cannot attempt to leave because we will be detained. You will There's be detained. There's no way for us to go to San Antonio. There's no way to, even though we are in the United States, we, can go, we cannot go anywhere above the 100 mile radius of the border with the Rio Grande. You said that you have two advanced degrees and you can't do anything with them. And listen, I'm going to play devil's advocate here because people will say you, if you have those two advanced degrees and you can, you can go to your, your home country, the country where you were born, I know that you were brought here as a child, and you can help people out there, you can use those degrees. Why is that not an option for you? Am I going to take the education that the United States pay for? Because I don't owe anything to the United States. I don't owe any student's loan. The United States pay for my entire education. Are they going to kick me back to Mexico to go help other people? This is my home now. I left the United States when I was 14. This has become my home. My value system has been developed here. My friends, my family, it's here. Yes, I have family in Mexico. Yes, my parents are in Mexico, and I can provide with them. They live in a country where their economic level is way below that of the United States, and me, I can't afford sending them money because I don't learn enough with the two master's degrees that I have. And so how come, why would the United States kick me out? Do they really want me to go share my wealth of knowledge that they had given me to another country? Is that what they no, want? No, but I think that the question is not that why would the United States kick you out? The question is, again, uh, is that why wouldn't you go to Mexico with the knowledge that you have of the United States and the education that you have gotten in the United States to help 
the, make the situation better in Mexico if you feel that you are trapped here and you can't, you are caged and you can't go anywhere. You can because go back this there. Is, this is my home. This is my home. And if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do something for my people who have become my family in the Rio Grande Valley. I want liberation for them. I want President Obama to be able to provide administrative relief to the hundreds of families who live here in the Rio Grande Valley and the rest of the nation. It's a shame that we can't get beyond the checkpoint to see our own families who live above the 100 mile radius. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't leave, because this is my home. What do you say to the people there? We have I am seen an American. We have seen protests. Uh, there for people on both sides saying you we must help these people we have seen protests from people saying you know what we can't afford them they must go back what do you say to those people who say listen we can't afford in this country to have thousands and thousands of people even if their children pouring in it is a, a drain and a strain on the economy what how do you respond to that I think that if we can uh, afford uh, money to go have a word in another side of the country in an, another side of the world if we're having war in another side of the world then we can afford being able to have these children here because they're fleeing for their for their lives they're fleeing for their lives and so i think that this nation should welcome them with open arms as they should welcome the rest of the undocumented families who live along the Rio Grande Valley and who live in other, in, in other border communities. Tanya Chavez, thank you for coming on CNN. I appreciate you telling us your story. And I should point out that Customs and Border Protection are not commenting on this specific case yet.